Hey, thank you, Prajesh. Good evening, everyone. So nice to speak to all of you. This is a great opportunity where we can discuss some of the concepts for uh, machine learning. And hopefully this session would be interesting. Uh, before I share my screen, I'll just like to check, is my voice audible clearly or are you still getting some noise, background very, noise? Very, very clear. You can continue. Okay. Thank you, Ramesh. So um, I'll be sharing my screen and the PowerPoint would be on a full screen mode. So I'll not be able to look into the Zoom window where if you raise hand or if you ask questions through the chat window i'll not be able to see but if you have any questions i honestly <clears throat> request all of you to unmute yourself and ask questions as many as you can there are there would be a lot of interactive uh, slides where you would get chance to speak you would get chance to ask questions and also uh, my main objective would be to make it more interactive so that the interest level flows in proper direction. Okay, so let me just share my screen. And I'll quickly make it full screen. So are you able to see the um, cover page? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. If anybody is not able to see the cover page or if anybody cannot hear me, please uh, keep in mind that I'm not looking at the uh, Zoom window. So please unmute yourself and let us know. Maybe Brijesh or the Tech Canvas team can help us to get more clarity on that. So uh, I'll quickly move on to today's agenda. These are the topics which we are going to discuss. So we will start off with, can I learn to learn the machine? What is it all about? It is about, uh, we, we will check some examples through which we can understand, do we have that interest level to interact with the machine? How do we interact with the machine? Is it rocket science? Is it difficult? Is it easy? So these examples, if we are able to interact and solve them among ourselves, we can be a little bit sure that yes, we are in the right track to make the machine learn about our intentions. Next, we will talk about the what factors, when factor, why and how. We will then move on to can we identify machine learning? These are a few examples where we will check some scenarios and see if these are machine learning problems. We will talk about training data and testing data. What's the difference between a training data and a testing data? We will then move on to the prerequisites of machine learning through examples. What do we actually need before we move on to machine learning? We will then move on to can we identify prerequisites. We will throw some examples and see if we can identify the requirement of a machine learning. And then we will talk about some common basic methods of machine learning. We will end the discussion with the next steps and obviously the questions from the bigger team that we have. So, can I learn to learn the machine? Okay. Let's see what's the example that we have here. So this is the first example which I would like to discuss with you. We have an equation which says x plus y is equal to 10. And we see from our database that the value of x is equal to 5. What could be the value of y? So if anybody wishes, they can unmute themselves and give us the answer. Or if anybody is facing problem to solve this, they can also unmute themselves and give us the answer. But if you are not giving the answer, I request to uh, mute yourself so that others can hear properly. So what could be the value of y if x plus y five. is equal to 10? Uh, five. Hey, hi. Yes. yes, absolutely. Absolutely, it is five. 
so uh, all right that's good anybody uh, would like to know why it's five so it's basically a linear equation x plus y is equal to 10 the value of x is given as 5 in order to find the value of y you take x on the right hand side subtract the value of x from 10 and you get the value of y so why are we taking this maybe some people think that this is a normal linear equation is it something related to analytics or something related to machine learning we will find that out in the next few slides so whenever we talk about machine learning we come, come across a lot of equations we come across a lot of uh, formulas but at the end of the day the basic thing that the machine learns quickly is the linear form of equation where the machine can shift the values from left to right or multiply or divide some basic operators which you would learn in any kind of programming language that's why we are learning this example we will quickly move on to the next example so this says that we found out y is equal to 6 x and we need to test y for the value of x is equal to 10 what would be the value of y so if x is equal to 10 what could be the value of y Sixty, fifty. Yep, absolutely. So the value of y would be sixty if uh, the value of x is given as ten. So why again we are learning this example? Uh, uh, we might have heard, we might have seen our colleagues, we might have seen our managers, our clients talking a lot about. Uh, analytics methods where they are trying to predict something where they are trying to find out some kind of trends now how do they actually do that they can't really predict something if they don't have a trend in order to have them to get a trend they need to be able to define what is x and what is the value of x they need to be able to define what is y how do they define y is it 6x is it like x plus y is equal to 10 that we saw in the previous example so these two examples my intention was to make you familiar that if you want to find the value of something it's quite obvious that you need to be able to have a given condition which we have learned everywhere throughout our school we can't really find out something which don't know and in order to find or in order to predict an unknown variable which we which is of interest to the client to ourselves to our family to our friends or to anybody we need to be able to define how we are going to predict or what is the equation of that prediction so that was the whole intention of talking about these two examples so if we understand these two then we are a step further to ensure that we are in the right track to make the machine learn so now let's quickly move on to the third example okay i do not know why it is okay. okay so 10 years back i remember my best friend used to enjoy ice cream on odd days of the week and pani puris on even days of the week that was 10 years back if everything remains same what could be the prediction of his choice today so today is a day and i'm giving you a historical analysis of 10 years back based on that historical data we are standing today we have a day today what could be my best friend's choice of snacks would he like to have ice cream or would he or she like to have pani puris ice cream <laughs> yeah. that's ice cream because why ice cream i hear a lot of background noise thanks for the answer by the way but i'm hoping uh, everybody is uh, able to get why ice cream the reason i'll tell you today is a day right today is saturday and uh, saturday is an odd day of the week if you 
uh, pick up in any kind of an Excel, you would see that the week starts from Sunday. That's the day one. But the week ends with the Saturday. That's number seven. So seven is an odd day. And we have seen that 10 years back, best friends used to enjoy ice cream on odd days. So we can infer from that previous analysis that since it's the seventh day of the week, it's an odd day of the week, he would like to enjoy ice cream instead of Pani Puris. Now, there are some softwares who make Saturday as an even day, but that's an exception. If that is the case, then also, yes. If anybody says that there is a software which says Saturday is an even day and I would like to answer Pani Puris, yes, you can do that. So we will move on to the last next example. Uh, what we are saying here is Kukabura cricket balls are machine made and have a low seam stitching. Okay, so Kukabura is a manufacturer of cricket ball. We must have seen, we all, I mean, I'm sure most of us would like cricket since we are sitting in Bombay. Uh, whereas SG balls are made in Mirat, these are handmade balls and have an uptight stitching. So what is uptight stitching? If you look at the stitching across the seam, they would look a little bit upright. You can feel them with your fingers. Vivek has been blindfolded and asked to feel and touch 10 different such balls of both kinds kept in a basket and classify the manufacturer. So what did I do? I have blindfolded Vivek. I have asked Vivek to touch 10 different balls kept in a basket and classify the manufacturer. Okay. Vivek identifies three Kukabura balls and four SG balls correctly. Why did he miss the remaining three? So out of those 10 balls, he could correctly identify seven, but he couldn't identify the three. Why could he, did he not identify the three? Because they were made, not made properly. Uh, so sorry, I didn't. Are, so there are different balls other than the SG and the Kukumra, which you know the instructions have not given to break. Yes, so ab absolutely. Absolutely. So there could be a scenario where in the basket there is a ball of a different manufacturer, let's say Duke, and that doesn't feel and look like Kukabura or SG. When Vivek took that ball, he was blindfolded. He couldn't see whether it was Kukabura or uh, SG. The ball was feeling different through his fingers and he couldn't identify those three balls correctly. So what is the intent of saying this example? Do we really get to know uh, to, once we go to office, would anybody give us Kukabura balls and SG balls or Duke balls and identify them correctly? obviously no but the intent of giving this question is because if you make the machine learn the history in a particular pattern there is a probability that the machine would throw the results based on that history if you give the machine something brand new the machine takes time to identify that the machine would also need some kind of history to say that it's a duke ball or it's a campus ball then only the machine can answer your questions. So if I replace machine with Vivek, Vivek has been identifying Kukabura and uh, SG balls for five, six times. Okay, so he, he knew what was in the history. He was able to predict it fine. But all of a sudden, he touched a different ball manufactured by a different company. He couldn't really make it. So it could be a flaw of make, making the machine learn or it could be an improvement opportunity for myself, for the analysts, or for the data scientists who are making the machine learn so that Vivek identifies the tube ball correctly. Okay, thank you. Uh, before I move on to the next example, I'd really like to thank you for your participation. Uh, it looks feels nice that you guys are reading these questions and at least trying to answer them and trying to interact with me. Thank you so much. So I'll move on to the last example. Okay, male trousers are heavier and longer than female trousers. Okay, no offense meant. Nilesh has made this observation with his eye 
estimation of 50 such trousers from his uncle's laundry. So Nilesh has seen 50 such trousers of male and female both. And he has inferred that normally male trousers are heavier and longer than female trousers. He walks in a laundry. Now suddenly a power outage occurs and he has been asked to segregate 20 such trousers into distinct packets as he needs to visit a washerman next morning. How many minimum packets he can create? So I'll explain to the bigger group that he has his eyes have been trained by seeing 50 trousers of both male and female and he has made an inference or a conclusion that male trousers are heavier and longer than female trousers. Suddenly there is a power outage in his laundry and he has been asked by his uncle to sort 20 trousers into distinct packets. He has to pack 20 trousers in distinct packets so that he can visit the washerman next morning. He has around 30 40 packets let's say blank packets brand new packets and he has the 20 trousers all piled up and he can't see there is a power outage he has to touch and feel those trousers and pack them in the packets how many distinct packets he can create minimum distinct packets he can create what's the easiest way of sorting those 20 trousers into Packets. How many packets should I create from a basic layman perspective? What would I do if I need to sort two packets? Uh, did, did somebody answer two? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Two packets, right? Because his eyes have been trained that trousers can be of two kinds. Heavier belongs to male. Lighter, shorter belongs to female. So he can uh, touch and feel those trousers, gauge the length and weigh them uh, because there is no power outage. He can't see and pack them in two distinct packets. Two is the minimum. He can pack two, ten maximum. That, that's that's uh, that's his choice. But what's the minimum he can pack? Two. It cannot be one because if he packs one, he cannot segregate those two trousers. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Sorry for the interruption. All right, thank you so much for interacting. Um, I'll quickly move on to the next slide. Okay, get to know what. What about machine learning? What is machine learning? What is not machine learning? All right, what is machine learning? Machine learning in basic language is a construction of algorithms that can learn from data. So in order to simplify this line, constructing an algorithm, it can be any formula, it can be any software, it can be any language, but constructing a flow of an algorithm that can learn the data as an input and answer my questions. Detect pattern and adjust actions accordingly. So once I construct the algorithm to learn the data, my algorithm should be able to detect any kind of pattern in the data and adjust their actions accordingly. So just to summarize, what is machine learning? People say, scientists say, people who are working on artificial intelligence, people who are working even on scientific movies, people who are working in Google, if you read blogs, if you read newspapers, you will get to know these are the two basic definitions that they give. These are the two basic points that everybody includes. That machine learning means construction of algorithms that can learn from the data. I need to have an algorithm. And also my algorithm or my flow of that algorithm needs to detect the pattern and adjust the actions accordingly. Adjusting the action is a very important point in machine learning. 
if the algorithm is not adjusting itself to the actions then there is a flaw in the machine learning for example in the previous example of kookaburra and sg balls vivek was not able to identify the three balls because it could be a those three balls could be of a different manufacturer now considering the fact if those three balls had been you know introduced to the machine previously and still the machine is not able to detect those that manufacturer and that means i can say that it's not able to adjust if it's a brand new ball and vivek is lord machine is seeing for the first time then the machine would approximate that answer and give you i cannot detect that it's a flaw or it, i cannot say that the machine didn't adjust accordingly but if i give the machine certain amount of data but still the machine is not able to adjust or my algorithm is not able to adjust accordingly then it could be a problem from my end that i was not able to make the machine learn okay so now let's see what is not machine learning explorative analysis okay what is explorative analysis we might have or might not have worked in microsoft excel but we definitely have uh, you know uh, made uh, calculations of groceries we might everybody might have gone to the market we might have purchased something but and also tried to make the total of that bill so making the total of something which is present in front of me subtracting operation of basic math mathematical operators identifying a chart making a chart all that belongs to explorative analysis that is not machine learning because that is dealing with the as is data i'm not adjusting or i'm not making the machine or i'm not asking the machine what would happen next if i give you a new data so any kind of analysis alone mind you is not explorative is is not machine learning so if i discover till today but not test tomorrow then people say it is not machine learning so i made all the calculations from previous time till today but i'm not testing those calculations on new data that can come tomorrow that is not machine learning so anything that would deal with detecting a pattern adjusting actions accordingly bringing in new data that would deal somewhere somewhat like the previous data that would be machine learning if the machine if the algorithm is simply doing a data exploration kind of a thing if the machine is simply doing a discovery till current date but not testing the data what would happen not asking questions what would happen tomorrow if a new data comes then that is not machine learning okay so i'll quickly move on to the next slide when does and doesn't a machine learn when does a machine learn when doesn't a machine learn so we can say that if the machine is able to store previous computations from data in all possible combinations if the machine is able to improve performance or recognition ability based on previous computations on receiving more information then the machine does learn properly we can say that it's a good algorithm which is learning fast how to simplify these two lines so explorative analysis we might or might not have heard about pivot charts in excel pivot charts or pivot formulas in excel they do a lot of they do very good explorative analysis but are they storing the computations in all possible combinations they can store computations based on a particular row and based on a particular column which the user is defining but does pivot have the ability to go and look all possible combinations of columns and rows and see what's happening it's no so that means it's not learning properly so any software any algorithm which you have your interest in where you can build your interest in where they can store the previous computations as well as in all possible combinations 
and also after storing those computations it is improving the performance and able to recognize the pattern so when i say vivek was able to store the computation of kukabura and sg balls nilesh was able to store how 50 trousers of male and female looked like weighed like he stored the computation. Based on that computation, he packed those trousers in two distinct packets. Based on two, those computations, Vivek was able to correctly identify three Kukabura balls and four SG balls. Not only storing the computation, but also in different combination. Vivek was able to see the combination of seam stitching, uh, the combination of leather stitching, uh, who knows? I'm, I I have not mentioned in the question. He might also have smelt the balls, right? He, but who knows? Nilesh might also have weighed the trousers, also have measured the trousers through his basic layman measurement. That yes, this is longer, this is shorter. So, all possible combinations should need to be there, and that based on that, he improved his recognition power. That's when the machine is learning. When it doesn't learn, let's see when it doesn't learn. If I just store previous computation from data of an explicitly defined combination. So for example, in a pivot table, I mean, I always use pivot table in any kind of an analysis, but in pivot table, I'm explicitly defining the combination. What is the row? What is the column? I'm not playing around with different combination. I have a limitation of giving only two combination, a two-dimensional structure, and seeing what is the count or what is the percentage or what is the basic statistics of the data. But my algorithm is not checking more than two combinations unless I am removing that column and row. Okay. Now, the second point, when it doesn't learn, it does not improve the performance recognition based on those computations. It doesn't have the ability on previous computation and while receiving more information. So, for example, if Nilesh was given 20 trousers and he was unable to pack them in more than two distinct packets, then I can say that there is still area of improvement to make Nilesh learn about how the data looks like about male and female trousers. So that means there is still area of improvement. I am not saying the machine is not learning, but there is area of improvement. So we talked about what is machine learning, what is not machine learning, when does or when doesn't a machine learn. Let's see why do we do machine learning. Okay. In order to understand why do we do machine learning, I felt it is important to go the other way around. If I can understand why, to, why we don't need machine learning, what are the areas where we will not need absolutely the concept of machine learning. If we can understand that, then understanding scenarios of where we need machine learning would be quite easy. So these are the areas where we definitely don't need machine learning. We are happy with repeatable tasks getting done by a computer with certain accuracy. We don't need machine learning in that scenario. We are getting business. We are getting job done with a proper quality. We are automating certain repeatable tasks which I am explicitly mentioning to the computer and I'm happy with that. I don't need machine learning. There are a lot of softwares, there are algorithms, which each of us might have come across in our experience uh, till now. And it is uh, automating the repeatable tasks. I'm happy with machine learning. And at the same time, I'm there to guide the computer on detecting my repeatable tasks. So what is getting automated? I'm telling the computer that this is what I'm automating for you. This is what you need to repeat one to hundred to thousand to n number of times in order to help my job. That is not machine learning. I'm not testing the machine. What did it learn? I'm just explicitly mentioning that this is what you need to do n number of times. Okay. What, why do we need machine learning? Now, if there is a need of validating a set notion or a set assumption through repeatability, that's when we need machine learning. If somebody says that this automated task helps 2FT job, 
but that's a set assumption. I'm not questioning the developer. I'm not questioning the implementer, but a third person who walks into the room, he says that this task, repeatable task, is getting automated and the machine is able to do this amount of task for two people. Now that's a set notion, that's an assumption through repeatability. I do not know, I haven't tested it. I am a new machine who is working in, walking into the room. So I need machine learning to do that. There is a need of breaking a set notion or assumption through repeatability. That's when we need machine learning. There is a need to validate a set assumption, a set belief. There is a need of breaking a particular set assumption by proving something new. That's when we need machine learning. So for example, I know that, uh, you know, through my past performance, my trainer tells me, uh, if it is a dry and a dead pitch, you won't be able to score more than 40 runs. Now, my trainer is saying that based on some previous performances. And, and I know that I can perform better in this match because although the pitch is dead and dry, I can play the spin better against this team. So my trainer has a set notion. I need to break that notion. So I need proper machine learning to predict that apart from a dead or a dry pitch, what other conditions can factor in favor of me to say, break this notion that I can go in the on the field, go out on the field and play the spinner. So that means I am asking the machine to look at different combination and permutation of computation and see whether the notion of the trainer is can be broken or not. Finally, there is a need of detecting the sequence of my repeatable task and throwing suggestions. So for example, I need to make an algorithm where the machine need to detect sequence of certain repeatable tasks and throw suggestions, not just explicitly do the repeatable task for myself. That's when I need machine learning. So what is not machine learning? I'm crystal clear. Any kind of explorative analysis, any kind of uh, data that is not testing tomorrow. When the machine does not learn, the machine would not learn if I am explicitly mentioning a certain combination. If I'm not testing all possible combination, the machine would not learn to its maximum capacity. Why the we don't need machine learning? If there is no need of breaking a set assumption or a set notion, if there is no need of detecting sequence, if I'm explicitly mentioning with that, I'm happy with that, I don't need machine learning. But rest, there is a chance of doing machine learning. That's the entire world is moving across. That's where a lot of educated people, a lot of educated businessmen, a lot of vibrant performers are making their hopes up. Okay. Finally, how do we do and how we, we don't do machine learning? How do we do machine learning? We need to have a right need of doing machine learning. We need to ask the right questions about machine learning. We need to have the right data structure about machine learning. We need to have the right tools to do machine learning. We also need to have the right intention of doing machine learning. How we don't do machine learning? If there is a pushing need, if somebody tells me that just automate this, just look at this kind of a scenario and see if any, if you can find anything from the past history, that means there is a pushing need. There is no flexibility. We don't do machine learning that way. We are answering quantitative performance, not qualitative performance. We are just saying that we have a 70% accuracy. We have a 70% quality score, but we are not answering how good is 70% or how bad is 70%. We are not answering the qualitative part of that metric. Sorry, was, was, that a, was that a question? And, Okay, so maybe somebody's mic is not on mute. 
All right. So there is incorrect secondary and tertiary data. Okay. There is incorrect tool usage and environment. There is incorrect intention. So if there is right intention, we definitely need to do machine learning. If there is incorrect intention, that that's that area where we don't need machine learning. Okay, we need to have right need, right questions, right data structure, right tools, right intention. All scenarios will not qualify for machine learning. That's hundred percent true, hundred percent sure. All business will not need machine learning. That is also hundred percent true. There is no point in challenging that. But yes, there are areas where machine learning can help to understand the business better. Machine learning can help to break a set notion or a set assumption. Okay. All right. So now it's time for interactive part again. I am really sorry. I am not able to see all the participants, but I really uh, encourage all of you who has joined this uh, webinar to actively see the next few examples and at least let me know if there is a difficulty you are facing in catching them or answering them okay i'm not i do not know you guys this is the first time i'm meeting you i do not know your names but just as a virtual uh, friendship i am requesting all of you to actively participate in these questionnaire so that the intent of today's meeting is met all right. Can we identify machine learning examples? Yeah, Armitra, sorry for interruption. Yep. Uh, what is right tool and uh, incorrect tool? Okay. So right tool and incorrect tool usage environment. All right. We talked about that all tools do not have the capability to compute through all different permutation and combination, right? If I make explicitly mentioning a tool that this is what combination this is the combination of the data you need to look at so that's an incorrect usage of the tool and the environment right but if i'm making a flexible algorithm a flexible environment where the tool can look all different kind of rows and columns then that's the right usage of the tool that's where i'm making the machine flexible enough to learn from all different combinations okay Okay. All right. It's it's good that you asked the question. I'd like to pause here for 30 seconds so that if anybody is waiting for their turn to ask question, they can. I can pick up a couple of them. I'm not sure if I can answer. I'll pause for 30 seconds before we move on to the examples. Okay, so I'm assuming that we are ready to move ahead. So this, so the next two, three slides, the outlook of the slides would look similar. The top row would have a question. We would be given four options. We need to identify which option qualifies that question. It can be one, it can be more than one. So we have four options. Out of these four options, which one of them uses a machine learning concept? So we just, if we can recollect quickly, what is machine learning? Why we do machine learning? How we do that? When does a machine learn? We would be able to quickly detect these answers. So I'll give you guys one minute, a couple of minutes to identify the answers. And I would request to after given a uh, given yeah given a player scoring habit to find out uh, when he would score his century okay that's my choice yes. okay anybody would like to come up with any other answer yeah find out if players comment on field is considered as legend hello uh, last year winner of ipl champion 
uh, you heard a real loud noise okay this is very loud ko text is ah rest ko gaadi hai nahi okay okay you you can choose more than one option if you like it's not that one answer would be correct but you can choose more than one so i would give another chance if if it sounds interesting really these i mean i hear a lot of uh, uh, you know attempts it looks promising so if anybody would like to take a final call okay so are we ready to see what are the right answers so i heard somebody choosing the second one correctly i heard somebody choosing the fourth one correctly as well but yes two and four we can pick that these are the scenarios where machine learning concept can be used why we are saying find out last year's winner of ipl championship is not a machine learning concept because it's an explorative data right we are just taking who are the winners of ipl championship and just picking out going to the last year and finding out of okay, go to the previous year and find out who is the winner i'm not doing anything for tomorrow why i'm saying find out the average score of a player of all ipl matches played is not a machine learning problem that's because i'm just calculating the mean i'm not moving anything further it's just a one combination score is just a one dimensional data i'm just calculating a basic statistic average when i'm saying it's a machine learning problem or not no it's not but average addition subtraction multiplication basic mathematical operators these are the foundations of any basic machine learning problem without average you definitely cannot move in any kind of statistical concept any kind of testing concept but if you keep your limitations just for one dimensional data and uh, calculating the mean without looking at the other dimension of the test statistic then you are not doing justice to machine learning you might be solving very effective problems but people say or the traditional definition of machine learning say that that's not learning machine is not learning through a one dimensional data okay thank you so much for answering this question i'll quickly move on to the next example okay similar concept i'll present you four options uh, hi hi you want me to move on to the next previous slide yes yes okay Yeah. Okay, so the machine learning diet. The fourth option: find out if a player's comment on field is considered as sledging. Okay, take it as an example. I know the uh, the list of you know the sledging. Okay, what are you know the way field is considered? Okay, then I can check against it whether you know the player's comment is you know against the sledging or not. That's you know kind of an example combination, right? I don't see any you know the machine have to learn the pattern and have to tell you know whether it is sledging or not. Yes. I'm seeing that in that's so, a very yes. So I'll tell you why I'm saying it's a machine. I understand there is a lot of background noise, but I I think I got your question that you are saying that player's comment is a one-dimensional data. I can do a control F analysis. I can do a filter analysis and see if the player's comment on the field is considered as sledging or not. That's uh that's a one dimensional data but that's one combination why we are saying it's a machine learning concept the reason why we are saying it is because you have comments of players on the field which is a historical data you have a live match now and the players comment on the field players makes a comment how would the umpire or how would the third umpire or how would the microphone set on the wickets or on the bells would identify it's a sledging or not that means i have supplied some amount of historical data to the machine based on that data i am validating today i am validating tomorrow and i am saying whether it is a sledging or not can you predict it's a sledging or not so let's say you have a set of players comments you have made the machine learn you have made an algorithm and now i give you a set of 
comments, fresh comments, can you identify out of this which one are sledging or not? So that means it's not just one dimension that you are looking at. There is a filtering that you are doing. There is different combination of players comment versus which are not sledging or not. You are also checking which ones are not sledging. Does that answer your question? Answered, but you know, I'm not convinced to it, you know, the, the thing mean like, you know, we are not okay. Actually, okay. Okay. The way I'm seeing, okay, it's about you know the how we see you know the things. Okay, I'm seeing as a different thing. Maybe yes. Yeah, I, see, I you you told about the machine learning right in the future. Okay, not only today the machine should adapt, correct? Right? Should adjust yes. for yes to learn. Okay. Say for yes. example, here in your case, right, the microphone will, will receive you know will receive the words or you know the comments from players keep on, and somebody have to go and tell right whether it is you know the sledging or not. Some I'm asking the machine. Yes, I'm yes. asking the machine. It can, to say it can record. Say. Yes, yes. Actually, it, tomorrow can be a new word. Okay, say for example, Duke. That is a word. Okay, a replacement for the you know, right? So Duke yes. is you know called as a sledging. Okay, so the players you know who speaks right, it will record and later you know it will you know will make it as a sledge. Yeah. Correct. So yes, I, I'm not saying you know that much difficulty. In, uh, you know, we need to learn. The mission has to learn, you know, the pattern they have to tell, you know, on the field that you know, the players come, players come to the situation or not. So, I'm not saying you know that much difficult. So the other area which I feel, you know, really you know the machine have to learn is you know the pattern because you know the scoring yes. pattern. It has to record, you know, the many attributes, not only one. Yes, but yes, on your second option, the scoring habit, you need to identify whether it would score a century. You are convinced that it's a machine learning problem. Yeah, but correct. Because you know it's a, it's a location, batting first or batting second, or you know which position, yes. and uh, yes. yeah, both the opponent. Lot of attributes, right? It has to record and it has to tell. Okay. Say yes. for example, you know how he scores. Okay. It will not come out with you know one pattern. It will it will not come out you know uh, come out with you know one attribute. But it has to take a decision similar. with you know many attributes. Like similar, you know, I'm I'm not finding I'm not convinced with you know the fourth option. So Similarly, you know the list of words you are going to pass. You know your list of you know the uh, the, the player who spoke, right? So you are just yeah. going to give that as an input, and you know going to filter out whether you know that the sledging word you know comes in that. Uh, but yes, that, that that's where the answer lies. You have different sorts of comments, right? You have comments which are related to sledging. You have comments which are not related to sledging. So you are creating a binary variable there. What is sledging? What is not sledging? Based on that binary variable, you would have thousands of dimension of words which are related to player's comment. Now, based on that comment, if you make the machine learn and you pass a set of new comments given by a team or a player, can you predict that this comment is a sledging or not? Ideally, this part of analysis is comes under a text analysis concept, which we do in a lot of automotive industries or credit card industries or even in fact marketing industries to analyze customer feedback where we tend to analyze email where we say whether that email is a, belongs to a particular category or not so there is a lot of text that goes behind text gets converted into n number of dimensions each dimension would have a cluster Based on that cluster, we need to predict whether it's sledging or not. But yes, if you say just one dimension based on comment, it's just a corpus of comments that I'm providing you. Based on that corpus, the algorithm needs to bifurcate the corpus into the dimensions and figure out whether it's sledging or not. Because when I'm passing a new comment, the machine does not know me. The category of sledging or not sledging, the machine has to predict whether it's sledging or not sledging. Similarly, based on player scoring habit, based on that scoring habit, the machine has to predict whether he would score a century or not. Okay, the why the fourth is the, the fourth option would become more convincing when we discuss about training data or testing data. But hold on to your thought. We are going on the right track and we should be asking questions at any point of time 
but I'm sure once we learn about training data and testing data, I would try to explain this example in a little bit detail so that a little more convincing uh, answers come up wh why I'm saying it's a machine learning problem. Okay, so are we good to go? Next slide. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much for all your questions. If anybody has questions, please do come up so that we can discuss later. So here is the next example. We have another four options, which are the following uses a machine learning concept. Okay, so this is the answer. Given the size of a mailbox used by employees in a large company, identify how much a trainee can be allocated. Why I'm saying identify if an incoming email is a spam. Compute the variation of emails received per hour on weekdays. Compare size of mailbox used by managers and analysts. These are all basic explorative data okay these are all basic explorative data but given the size of mailbox used by employees in a large company if i am asked to identify how much a trainee can be allocated that's a kind of machine learning concept which i'm incorporating i need to look at the size of the mailbox the designation of the mailbox sorry the employee and the usage pattern of that mailbox, then only I can identify how much a trainee can be allocated. I can't just give a trainee a particular size, but I also have to study the size of trainees, in current trainees in the company before I allocate the size. Are we good to go to the next slide? Yeah, good to go. But uh, the second, first option, identify if an uh, incoming email is a spam, is very similar to you know, what we discussed in the first. Uh, uh, first yes. Uh, yeah, like the, yes. the first one is an example of uh, is a machine learning concept. Yes, it's a, it, it, it is an example of machine learning concept. But we are saying incoming email, whether it's a spam or not, right? I understand if you, are, if you are predicting the outcome of the incoming email, then it, whether it's a spam or not, if the question is, is the email spam or not, then it could have been a machine learning problem, but the email has already come. Based on that email, you are identify whether it's a spam or not. But on the previous example, based on the concept of uh, the pattern of uh, players comments you are identify whether it's sledging or not it's a, it's a new uh, comment but but whether i'm saying is, is it a new email the email has already come it's not a new email it could be an explorative analysis it could be a machine learning problem but there are scenarios where you have been given a set of emails and you need to segregate those emails in whether it's a spam or not okay but if you if you are thinking it's a new email then the answer is correct that yes it's a machine learning concept but are we clear about the fourth answer the fourth one is okay yeah but are we clear about the why second and third are not machine learning concepts Yes, uh, second and third, you know, it's okay. Right. Okay. So I'll quickly move on to the next slide, if you permit. Yes, please. Which of the following identifies an opportunity of machine learning?
Okay, anyone would like to take a call? How many options I need to choose for? Or are we ready to see the answer? Option, option one. Okay, any other option would you like to select? Read, it's a new claim I'm talking about. Huh? The machine doesn't know. I might have fed the machine about the pattern of the claim before, and I'm testing the new claim. So you can pick up two as well. So is okay, third option three. Okay, option three. You can pick multiple options. Don't just restrict yourself to one option. It can be one, it can be all four of them, it can be two, four. Okay. So let's look at the answer. So the all four I'm saying have an opportunity of machine learning. Why? The first one says need of classifying campaign claims. Campaign claims are a separate category of claims claimed by an automotive dealer. I need to classify whether the new, whether the claims serviced by an automotive dealer belongs to a campaign claims. Similar to the sledging concept, I need to identify whether the particular comment is a sledging or not. I need to categorize the claims based on whether it's a campaign or a not. Okay, the next option, I need to identify if a new claim comes, whether it would be accepted or rejected by an automotive parts supplier. So I might have fed several claims and patterns of claims and several combinations of claims accepted and rejected. I have compared the corpus of accepted versus rejected. Now a new claim comes, a fresh claim. Okay, I need to know whether it's accepted or rejected. What's the probability of getting accepted or rejected? So it's an opportunity of machine learning. Third option, identify which customers could be sent marketing campaigns based on their research habits. There is a habit which I need to search. There is a pattern which I need to detect. Based on that pattern, I need to identify which customers could be sent marketing campaigns. Those customers could be new, could be old. Those customers could be like Vivek, they, are, they would be touching Kukabura and SG balls, but they would also not be touching Duke balls. So there could be a bunch of new customers, old customers. I might have a pattern of searching habit. I might not have a pattern of searching habit. So it's an op opportunity of machine learning. Identify whether a picture is of a male or a female through tagging. Okay, I need to feed the machine with pixels of how a male or a female look like. The machine would identify the pattern of pixels of the cheek, of the eyes, of the chin, the nose, the lips. Based on the pattern of those pixels, the machine needs to predict whether this picture is of a male or a female. So it's an opportunity of machine learning problem. There is a detection of pattern in all possible combination. You need to store the computation of the pixels. Not only you need to store the computation of the pixels, but you also need to improve your recognition of those pixels when I feed you with a new picture of a male or a female. But obviously, I would feed you how the pixels of male or female look like beforehand, just like I did to Nilesh. I would tell you how male or female trousers would look like based on those trousers if the light goes off you need to touch and feel and find whether it's a part you need to tag whether how many distinct packets you need to make so it's an opportunity of machine learning because if i give you a new picture let's say nilesh 
there are 20 trousers where Nilesh packed them in two distinct packets. Instead of 20, let's say Nilesh has 25 trousers or the 21st trouser. Nilesh also has to follow the same procedure to uh, pack it in packet number one or packet number two because he's segregating them into male or female packets. So it's an opportunity of machine learning. Do we agree? Am I audible? Yes, audibility is questionable. You're audible, but then I have a question. All of sure, these sure. that you are explaining are pretty much uh, doable in any other language, not just machine learning. It's all about the number of parameters that you're able to provide and the kind of uh, recognition that you are able to power to each of these mm -hmm. systems or design i i'm not mentioning about language i'm not i'm mentioning about the logic or the what why when and how i'm not correct. mentioning about the language correct but can you, can you all, do this all the of mechanisms that i'm talking about i've never called them machine learning i've only called them the regular uh, feeding where i but, fed something and but, the computer yeah. was do something but can you classify a campaign claim claimed by an automotive dealer through a pivot? You can identify whether how many campaign claims are there, how, how many non-campaign claims are there through a pivot. But would you be able to classify a new claim? Would you be able to identify a new claim that would be accepted or rejected by an automotive parts supplier? You would definitely use some if formula, right? You would condition it. Correct. You would condition it. So, so, you, so you are feeding an algorithm. So are you seeing when I speak about machine learning, we don't feed in anything because while you were we, trying to explain the first point, you said we would feed in certain variables. So you are saying when you are saying you can do this in Excel, I asked you, you would be feeding in some formulas to identify whether it is an accepted claim or rejected claim. Your answer was yes, right? So you are feeding in something, some condition. Correct. So when I said you need to detect pattern, you need to design an algorithm and the algorithm needs to look at all possible combination. That means I'm feeding some conditions to the algorithm. When I'm saying I am feeding the machine about the pixels of a male or female picture, that means I'm feeding the pattern to the machine. I am not so talking about any language. You are feeding something, right? So I, all through my life, all through my coding career, I have fed something to the system and I got the results accordingly. I never called it machine learning, but why should I be calling it now? I have okay. once again used an algorithm there. Okay, so you made an algorithm to detect whether the claim is accepted or rejected. Mm -hmm. but right. What happens if a new claim comes? You would use the same algorithm. Is that algorithm ready enough to detect a new claim? So for example, not... so for example, I'll quickly... uh, I, let me give you my example. I have uh, I have claims about A, B, C, and okay. I suddenly uh, have a new campaign claim about D. Now okay. my machine would not recognize it. Are you saying that the machine learning that the concept that you are talking about will recognize it? Yes, it will. It will. Given it will. that, ah, ah, I, will, I will give you a basic example, okay? In the interest of time, I'll hmm. just give you, since we are all familiar with Excel, I am not sure how to share this. Uh, new share. Let me just take this Excel, okay? Okay. Let me know if everybody can see the Excel. Yeah. I you can, can see the Excel? I'm able to see it, yeah. Okay, so I generate random numbers between zero and one. Hmm. Okay. I am feeding the machine based on these data. Now, you are saying you have created algorithms. I am saying I am creating an algorithm. If this is, is equal to zero, then mark it as. 
yes if this is or else mark it as no okay okay any kind of language any kind of explorative analysis would do this correct we all have do this where machine learning brings the difference for example today i bring these new four rows to the data mm -hmm. who is explicitly dragging these rows till here a human right to no get human. the answers of these no, these rows to get the answers of these four rows which are highlighted in yellow right a human need to drag these four rows otherwise i'll not know the answer of these four rows correct instead of a human i am making an algorithm and i'm asking the algorithm that if a fresh claim or a fresh data comes make yourself flexible enough to give your answer whether it's a yes or no i am giving a very basic layman perspective we all have worked in excel we work we all have worked with excel formulas and we all have given pivot table but what happens if the new data comes these four rows somebody needs to tell me that i need to go oh, i need to drag the formula right to know the know my answer but that's a human who is doing it that's that's an explicit condition which i'm mentioning to the algorithm which to repetitive so this so let's say all five days all four five, four new rows come right so it's an explicit repetitive task to my machine to give me the answer so this is a repetitive task i am explicitly dragging the rows but i am making an algorithm that if a new row comes make yourself flexible so that if you find your next cell blank go to your next cell check the left value and say whether it's a yes or a no based on your if condition that's prediction that you are making although it is i mean not technically prediction just for the concept all right so let me just this is in the interest of time i'm really running low on quickly move on to the next example okay we have done this let's see what's this which of the following would not help machine learn know the format and structure of data would definitely help machine learning that's where i can do permutation and combination know the access and summary of data would also help machine learning and know the pattern and requirement of data would also help machine learning but would knowing the cost of data help machine learning it won't right because at the end of the day i would need data to do any kind of analysis be it explorative or be it a uh, a uh, future perspective analysis costing of the data won't help but definitely the format structure how many columns are there in the excel how many rows are there in the excel what's the summary of the data through pivot these are the basic necessities that the machine would need in, in start in, in order to get the feed the pattern the requirement of the data unless i know the requirement of the data i won't be able to define the combination of where to look at so these are definitely some patterns that would help machine learning okay so to answer that text analysis concept what is data these are the rows that i have these are the variables that i have and let's say i have numbered the rows from 1 to 10 this is the data all data that i have out of this the column which is highlighted in gray i am interested to know this column okay now let me clarify here with an example that this column for example is categorized as whether the concept whether the comment is sledging or not in a yes or no concept now the comments per se of that sledging can be anywhere in the rest of the columns can be anywhere here can it can be here it can be here it can be here as well but let's say in in this column i have a simple yes no 
coding which I just showed in the Excel. I need to identify this variable. That this is my variable of interest. Okay, this is the actual data. What is training data? I pick up certain rows from this data. Row number two, four, five, seven, nine, ten. Okay, and I also pick up the same variable which is of interest. This is my training data. I'm training the machine based on these many rows and see what is the pattern. What is my testing data? I am picking the rows which I have not picked up before. Row number one, three, six, and eight, I have not picked up before. Those were not part of the training data set. Those are fresh data set. Imagine those are fresh. I'm picking the same columns and I'm testing it on that yes, no variable. So the job of dragging that cursor of Excel, I'm saying, go and look at the observation of all the training rows. And can you apply that learning on the remaining rows of one, three and six and eight and say whether I should have a yes or no? How would you answer whether it's a yes or no? based on the learning that you have had on yes or no in the training data based on the learning that you have had here on this gray variable can you answer me whether it should be a yes or no on the remaining data that is test that's where i test my algorithm that's the testing data that's very important in any kind of machine learning concept in any kind of machine learning examples that i have gone through why the email spam is not a machine learning problem? I'm saying I have a variable here where it says whether it's spam or not, but I'm not testing. I'm not dragging it down and testing whether it's spam or not. But if somebody asks me, you have a fresh spam email, tell me whether it's spam or not. Yes, 100% it's a machine learning problem. I agree. So with a basic example, we train our memory with solved questions and answers before the exam day. We test our question solving ability from our brain to answer on the exam day. That's a simple example of machine learning. We read a concept. We train a machine to learn certain questions and answers. We everybody have solved matrix, which are there in a suggestion kind of a, a solved question and answer on any kind of semester, any kind of courses that we have learned. Now, based on those solved question and answers, we go on the exam day and we try to test our brain. Can you answer this question? That's a very basic example of machine learning concept. What are the prerequisites of machine learning? Let's say this is the roadmap of my machine learning. And my starting point is here where the gray arrow is pointed. And my end arrow is here where at the top left hand corner where I need to go. I have five checkpoints. I have five halts where I can stop on the roof. Okay. And I have two points where I can refill my tank. There are two areas where you need to, where you can refuel yourself. Now, what are those two areas where you can refuel yourself? And what are those other five checkpoints where you can make sure that your journey is safe? The first checkpoint, write down what we want to do. That's when you start your journey. There is a lot of background noise. Anybody, somebody, themselves on me. I'm not sure if I'm audible to the other people. Anything from you from your end? It's from my end? Okay, now it's fine. Okay. So the first point I'm saying is write down what we want. That's before the start of any journey, we always ask where we want to go, right? So it's better we write down what's our problem. The next checkpoint as well as a fueling point, understand the flow and refresh process of the data. How the data is flowing, what's the refresh process of the data? You always need to refill yourself. You always need to refill your tank and you always need to make a halt at this point of time to ask more questions to make sure to understand that's a prerequisite of your machine learning. What's the third point? Explore the structure and summary patterns of the data. There is definitely an, a very important halt, but 
it's a very key halt where you need to explore the structure properly, do the explorative analysis properly, find out the summary properly, and identify what would you do on your next fueling point. So what's your next fueling point? Identify the method of learning required. What's the method, learning, artificial intelligence method or machine learning method? Very basic concept. What's the formula that you will feed in the data to make, your, make the machine learn? What's that algorithm? Which method of logic you will follow to make the machine learn? So if you understand point two and point four, and if you make a lot of investment, good amount of investment in point two and point four, most of your job is done. And finally, very important, when you end your journey of machine learning, is test your learning on fresh sample data. Fueler points, understand the flow and refresh process of the data, identify the method of machine learning after you do some explorative analysis, you do some summary, you do some patterns of the data. But imagine I asked you before, just stopping at point number three and not moving to point four and point five is not machine learning. Tools, algorithms, intentions, questions that walk that extra mile to fulfill point number four and point number five are all machine learning concepts. But if you stop at point number three, that's a descriptive analysis. That's just exploration, but not machine learning. That can solve n number of questions, that can solve n number of doubts, but it is not quote unquote machine learning per se. Nothing against, nothing for. Okay, so just to making the fuel points revolve just to make sure understand the flow and refresh process of the data and identify the method of machine learning can we identify the prerequisites and examples just to, in the interest of time i'll show you the options which of the following would identify low fuel in my second halt these are the areas the recent date value of an important variable is three months old that means i need to check the data there is a sanity check i need to do the recent data is uploaded, however, it has some missing values. That means the refresh is not complete. So stop there, make your halt, fuel your tank, and ask why it has not been refreshed. Because if you take that variable as correct data, you may be making a mistake in feeding your algorithm. If you don't treat your algorithm to check for missing data, you may be making a mistake or you may be taking time on your own to make sure that the machine doesn't learn properly. Finally, the recent sales value of an important variable does not have all the products sold by my client. So from your historical analysis, the client generally sold 10 products, but due to this refresh, you see there are only two products. So stop there, make a halt and ask, is it that in this month, the client has sold only two products or very obvious the client has sold more than two products but it has not flown in the data so that's the second fueling halt i was talking about but what about this the recent sales value of an important variable does not have decimals do i need to really make a halt it's okay in my programming or in my excel i can always format that data properly but missing value refresh process whether all the categories are present all the dimensions are present that's where i need to make a halt and ask myself questions do I have the right data? I'll move on to the next example. Which of the following would identify low fuel in my fourth halt? Remember the fourth halt. The third halt was still analyzing the summarizing summary of the data. So method to train my data has an error to read my inputs. So my algorithm is not reading the training data properly, as is data properly. That means I am applying the method in a data which is not formatted properly, which is not structured properly. Definitely, I need to make a halt. The method to train my data has low number of records. Definitely, yes. If your training data set has a low number of records, you are making the machine learn with low number of data. For example, considering 50 trousers of male and female, if that was given to Nilesh, if I give only two trousers to Nilesh, 
it's definitely a low record. Based on two trousers, Nilesh would not be able to make an inference on 20 trousers and pack them in two distinct packets. So make sure your training data has good number of records. The method to train my data has low accuracy. What I mean, what do I mean by accuracy? It can be any statistic. It can be the average, it can be the standard deviation, it can be the true positive versus false positive, how much I want versus the total number of observation. It can be any statistic. But the accuracy is low. I'm not getting that much of value. So go back, look at your training data and make sure that you have programmed that algorithm properly. The method to train my data is inadequate to answer my question. Obviously, this is the right answer. You need to make that halt on that uh, fuel point. Make sure that if the data or the method is not adequate, there are a lot of methods which you can apply. One method or the other would definitely apply to a particular structure of the data. If that method is not reading the data, then definitely method two will definitely read the data. So I want to go out and play. If one t-shirt is not fitting me, then definitely the second t-shirt would fit me and I can go out and play. It's just about the fit, just about the process where I'm trying to answer the question. The next example, which of the following would identify low fuel in my final halt? Final halt was what was about the final halt? Testing the data, testing the training data. Okay. So what are the right answers? This met the method used to train brings higher accuracy on testing data. This is problematic. Training data, higher accuracy, okay. But testing data, that's fresh data, it brings higher accuracy. So, for example, Vivek is detecting the fourth kind of a manufacturer, but I have given him only three manufacturers. That means there is a problem. So I have asked Vivek to detect somebody who is themselves. There is a lot of background noise, I am not sure. Okay, so there are three kinds of balls which I have given Vivek to detect from, but suddenly Vivek says that, hey, I also have a plastic ball, which we used to use in our childhood. We also have a plastic ball. That means Vivek is detecting the ball. He is accurate. That means my testing data is going more accuracy than I expected. But I need to find out, hey, he's detecting a plastic ball. Did I really feed him with a plastic ball? That means is the plastic ball, ball coming new to my data or it is there in the testing data? I need to stop, halt and ask questions. The method used to train brings lower accuracy on testing data. That is, that is also something which I don't need to bother about. But it is quite obvious that training data would be more accurate than testing data in any kind of live example. Okay, So if it brings abnormally low accuracy, then you definitely halt. But the notion is training data brings more accuracy than testing data. Because training is what is actually present in front of me. Testing is the new. So a little bit amount of variation would definitely be there. The method used to train brings is not detecting the testing data. So, for example, the method I'm used for training is not detecting the testing data. That means there is a problem in the structure of the testing data. So, the rows which I talked about previously, there is a problem in the structure of the data that you are feeding into the algorithm. So, make sure that the structure of the training and testing are same. Only the difference between training and testing is in training. You need to have that variable which you are questioning. In testing, you just need to subtract that column that you are questioning. But all other combination have to be present. Because unless you remove the variable which you are questioning, the prediction will not come out. Based on, because the machine, you are basically answering somebody before asking the question. So the question needs to be removed from testing data. That's when your, the answer to your question needs, has to come from. Okay. The method used to train is not showing 90% accuracy on testing data. So 90% is not a notion. 90% is neither a belief. If somebody is saying 90% does not mean good, that means it, it is not something which I need to bother about. There are uh, models, there are methods where 40% is also good and there are methods where 99% is also low. Okay. So it is very important to make sure that 
what is the accuracy of your training data versus testing data what is the method that you are using for both the methods and whether your testing data is able to detect the algorithm correctly or not for example whether nilesh was able to detect those 20 trousers correctly or not they those have to be trousers they cannot be shirts you can't just train nilesh based on trousers and give his give him shirts and say that now segregate the shirts that is the basic inference i was talking about okay common methods of machine learning this is the input data all input data would have a flow it would have certain functions and based on that these are the basic common methods classification analysis regression analysis and cluster analysis these are the methods these are the uh, actual programs or formulas which i was talking about where you can use the training data and ask what would be your prediction based on the testing data these are the actual functions so basic layman perspective it would have an input the input needs to be connected with a set of functions and from the functions you need to come out an output so that's what those functions are called classification regression and cluster so i'll quickly stop here and i will go back to my chat window and see if i have any kind of questions Am I still audible? Yes, you are audible. Okay, I'm audible. Okay, cool. So I see somebody has joined from phone as well. So that was the whole intent of you know discussing. I don't know whether the link would disconnect right at 9 p.m. because I was under the impression that it was from 7:30 to 9. Uh, good that we brought a lot of questions and so what is the summary we need to understand the difference between training data and testing data how they are structured we need to understand is this the right problem where i need to implement machine learning will just a descriptive analysis answer my question or i need to study several other questions and see do i need to answer a question on Can ask me questions now, or do you have any other requests, any other interest level? Can you uh, can you explain me the real example of machine learning today? That's possible for you. Real example, for example, let me check this. Facebook, Facebook feeds are all uh, machine learning. Yes, identify a picture on Facebook, whether it's a male or female, to tag it. No, the feeds actually, the feeds provided by the Facebook is also machine learning. Yes. So based on you know what you what you are doing, right? It will just you know, predict your uh, pattern and then suggest you know what you know what. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, you want. That's absolutely right. Today, Gmail offers uh, email can can be categorized as a priority or social. So, can be an example of that machine learning or not? I didn't get the question. Google offers email chains for Google offers email chains for. No, no, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm asking that Gmail and um, Gmail today offers the emails can be categorized as a priority in in a priority inbox or social inbox on a particular uh, on a particular criteria using particular criteria. That can be okay, an example so you, of machine learning or not? That's artificial intelligence. So you are saying when a new new email comes, it is automatically mm -hmm. going to your priority inbox or normal inbox? Yes, yes, yes. So that can be that can be example of machine learning or not? Yes, yes, yes. It it can be yes. Okay. I mean, you are not involving any kind of statistics there, but artificial intelligence based on your reply, based on your preference of opening that uh, email that is coming from that particular sender. So, 
that's that's i would say artificial intelligence which is also a broad concept and machine learning broadly in it industry it involves a lot of learning fast learning yes i would say that is machine learning based on history but i don't think google would is now involving any kind of statistics to identify whether it's priority in box or that in box that's purely a robotic analysis without statistics but yes your answer is right that's part of machine learning okay what's the next set of action oh next set of actions i would have liked to discuss uh, these topics prerequisites of regression analysis practical examples of regression analysis similarly prerequisites and practical examples of cluster and classification analysis and how to measure performance of a model so that would be a logical flow but it would definitely depend on uh, your interest level your uh, uh, i mean i mean how much uh, you would like to know from today's session how much we captured from today's session based on that okay uh, so today's training is a free session right so what about the if you want to go deep into the machine learning or the coding in this session what is the interest so, because in person of average they are really in me and like so, me interest to so pre prerequisites of regression analysis would be a separate session from my end it would be a one hour session Okay. And practical practical examples of regression analysis would be again a one-hour session. But I need to know which tool would be used. Which uh, I need to form the data sets. I cannot bring in just copy paste from the industry due to data protection. I need to create that data and also understand what kind of regression because regression there are different kinds of regression. I generally try to uh, touch upon linear and logistic. but there are uh, uh, multi linear and multi logistic as well but for basic understanding basic linear and basic logistic. similarly for cluster key means cluster basic key means cluster and uh, uh, would would solve the purpose but for classification analysis uh, there are key means algorithm there are key and classification uh, classifying the text whether it's a sledge or not whether it's a spam or not for a new email those kind of classification there are various classification which i can talk about okay and and obviously performing uh, performance of the model like how much true positive how much false positive you need what's the accuracy uh, what is the what roc chart that is receiver operating characteristics where the performance of the model is gauged based on the more observation you start feeding in will the machine keep on throwing predictions better and better or will the performance of the machine go down at some point of the time okay so that's something which we definitely need to understand people they generally have a concept that if the training data set has 50 trousers let's say would my machine predict for 5 million trousers how is that or if i give 50 trousers would my machine predict correctly 20 trousers so what is that ratio how am i performing that is something which definitely needs to be discussed for me but yes the intent of today would be to understand whether i can understand the prerequisites of machine learning what are the examples of machine learning do i need understand the difference of training data and testing data and can i identify a machine learning problem so whatever you gave me those examples i I, th i think we definitely correctly understand now what is machine learning what is not and what am i asking the algorithm that option of dragging the excel manually can i feed the algorithm and say predict so if we can identify the problem solving the problem anybody can solve his own way just like the fingerprints we have on humans so but identifying the problem is very very important and also the halt this slide is something which is which i find people difficulty in understanding what is the difference in point number 2 and point number 4 they think that if they understand the flow of the refresh point number 4 is automatically answered whereas it is not the right question refresh process is something else 
and uh, I would say exploring the structure of the data is something else and identify whether you want to apply cluster, whether you want to apply regression, whether you want to apply a classification problem or whether you just want to apply an if else formula and that could solve your purpose. So identify that method is very, very important. And also testing your data is also very important. But yes, I would definitely encourage you if you have any questions that once you go back and try to rethink your uh, course today, we have had a lot of interactive session. Please do forward your question to Tech Canvas and uh, hopefully I, uh, if they forward to me, I would get those questions. I would try to answer them as quickly as possible. Hopefully I was able to convince why that sledging um, was a machine learning problem. That's a purely a part of a text analysis problem. But identify a new spam email would also be a text, anal text analysis problem. But just categorizing that spam email is not a machine learning problem. It's, it's not even a classification problem. It's a descriptive classification problem. But yes, if I give you a new email, it definitely would bucket under a classification problem. I see some participants have started leaving. So uh, thank you for your patience throughout. And uh, if you have any questions, please do forward them to Rajesh. And if you have any feedback, please do pass on to Rajesh, uh, Nazanin, or Abhishek. That would be really encouraging and that would help me to prepare myself to interact with you in the near future. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, for any, any kind of a query and any kind of, kind of information, you can uh, contact us. I'm going to share our contact details in a chat box. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Enjoy your weekend. Hello, Amia. Hey, Amia has a question. I sorry, I could I was on full screen, couldn't really notice it. Is Amia still audible? Yes, sir. Actually, he's there in the. Uh, he's still connected. Actually, if you. Hello, Amia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm. I uh, have asked a question privately to him, but in any case, he's not responding. If he asks any question, please do get in touch with them so that I can answer them properly. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Brijesh. Thanks for your support. I am logging off. I hope I'm okay to log off. Yes, sir. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, sir. And good night. Okay. You too. Bye-bye.